Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome, Aunt Emily. Thanks for being with me today. Well, I'll go ahead and get started, and that way, if there's anyone else that it, um, will join us, that would be great. But I welcome you to the Indiana State Museum. I am here in our naturalist lab right now. Um, and so we're going to do our programs right here. So thank you for joining me. Please make sure to um, be in speaker view if you're not already and making sure you stay muted. Um, there is a chat box. So if you have any questions, feel free to write those in the chat box and we'll answer those towards the end of the program. So um, I'm going to actually start off the program with a, um, a PowerPoint with some slides to talk a little bit about some of the um, artifacts we have here in our Birth of the Earth gallery and then show you a video from our early childhood um, expert here at the museum. His name is Evan Johnson and he's going to lead you in um, an activity called Lunar Landers and then I'll come back and join you to kind of show you again some of the supplies, answer any questions, and move forward from there. So thank you. So give me a second. I'm going to share my screen so you can join us um, on the PowerPoint presentation. So Lunar Lander. So if you haven't been to the Indiana State Museum, um, we are here down on, along the canal in downtown Indianapolis. And so there is a picture um, of our building. And we were actually one of 12 sites across Indiana. So if you can see, we have them spread out all over Indiana from our Jean Stratton Porter site up in Rome City and also Limberloss, which is part of her property, all the way down to Angel Mounds in Evansville. Um, some of our historical homes, which we have Lanier in Madison, Indiana, and Culbertson Mansion in New Albany, and Corden, the state capital. We also have Vincennes and Vincennes and some historical buildings there, New Harmony, um, as well as Whitewater Canal. So we have a boat and a grist mill in that area. TC Steel down in Nashville for the artist residence and his large studio, as well as we have about, we have acres of land there that you can explore. And then our Levi and Catherine Coffin house on, and home in Fountain City. So please be sure to go visit any of those sites if you haven't already, or maybe ones in your neighborhood. At the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites, I'm going to talk a little bit about the State Museum here, um, just as so families know some of the things we have. Uh, we do have an early childhood program here at the Indiana State Museum. <clears throat> we do lots of different STEAM programming, incorporating art, history, science into the early childhood, and we serve 18 months all the way um, up to the six-year-old, eight-year-old range. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have an early childhood area called Firefly Landing that we host all of our programs. And so we have various programs from toddler time to small wonders to young explorers, um, messy Mondays, and even summer camp during the summer. For those K-8 students, we actually have various camps throughout the year. So our next one's coming up, our, our fall break camps. So they start next Monday and last for three weeks in October. So if you have uh, a fall break and you're looking for something for your children to do, by all means, take a look at our fall break camps. Um, we have various topics, as you can see, from simple machines to chemistry. We have space integrated in that as well, art, um, super small. So we have lots of great hands-on fun some, uh, camps during the fall during the winter, spring, and of course, during the summer. And we do have scholarships available for those camps too, so please check those out. <clears throat> we also have Homeschool Tuesdays, which happen once a month on a Tuesday, obviously. And so um, those are for families with children in K through six, and that's for the children and um, adults in their lives to come as well for those. Again, same topics, space, chemistry, art, history, all those various topics. And then just to let you know right now, on our screen you can see that's our frozen rain where you get to walk through the actual um, ice cave going into our frozen rain gallery where you can see our mastodon and mammoths. And then right now one of our traveling exhibits we have here is our Daniel Tiger's neighborhood exhibit, specifically for our little visitors that come and visit us. So that's all the way through January, so it runs the same time as our celebration crossing and holiday experience. So please come and visit us if you have little ones who may be very familiar with Daniel or like me, remember Daniel from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. 
That is a timed ticket experience. It is part of your admission, but because of capacity, um, we have small capacities for that. We do require timed tickets. Uh, they're for 45 minutes on the quarter hour, so 10, 15, 11, 15 throughout the day to allow us to shut down and clean it before the next group can come in. But it's super cute, super exciting. Just to give you a little bit of background here, in our Birth of the Earth um, Gallery at the India State Museum, we actually have some um, materials and artifacts and specimens in the collection just like this. You're looking at our moon rock that is here at the museum. <clears throat> we were fortunate to celebrate Apollo 11's 50th anniversary last year, and we continue to celebrate space by having Indiana Day of Space, which is also happening today at the Indiana State Museum um, and happens annually. And so please make sure whether um, you can come back at another time to come and see some of our space um, objects here at the museum. So as we're celebrating space, Indiana Space Day here today, um, we are highlighting our moon rock. This moon rock sample is actually cut from a larger rock called Lunar Sample 60025, which was actually retrieved by Apollo 16 crew back in 1972. So this is pretty, um, we're pretty happy to have this here. It's definitely something to come and see. So please visit and come and see the moon rock for yourself. In addition, we do have some Apollo 11 artifacts that are on display right now, as you can see from this case. And on the um, one side there, you see the Life magazine that highlighted um, the Apollo 11's moon landing and um, shows some pictures and photographs that Neil Armstrong um, and Buzz Aldrin took while they were on the moon. Um, in addition, that piece in the center is actually a record um, it is called We Came in Peace for All Man Mankind, so it's an actual record you can play on your record player. And you can see a picture there of the Eagle Lunar Lander mo uh, module right there on the cover. And then on the other side, you can see there looks like our, the flag, and that is, that is um, the Indiana flag that was flown on the Apollo 11 mission as well. It's really hard to see in this picture, but there's a little ball on the top of the flag that actually has some moon rock samples from the Apollo 11 uh, moon mission as well. So here the plaque um, is in that photograph, the plaque and the flag were presented to our, at that time, Governor Whitcomb. Um, and so we do have pieces from the moon from the Apollo 11 moon landing, as well as the flag that was on that mission. So today we are gonna actually um, talk about lunar landers and we're gonna make our own lunar lander. And um, please, if you haven't already, we do have a um, lesson plan, activity plan on how to make lunar landers. This one that we're gonna show you is specifically for that pre-K second grade level. And then I'll come back and show you some alterations you can do for older kids as well. So simple materials you can find around your home marshmallows, ping pong balls, pom-poms, something that can act as your astronaut, coffee filter, paper, aluminum foil, something that's gonna help um, with your lunar lander landing, small plastic container, Dixie cup, something that your astronaut says your cockpit, the lander itself that they're gonna sit in, pipe cleaner, string, wire, and of course some masking tape to hold it all together. So we're gonna watch a video of Mr. Evan talking um, about how to build some lunar landers for your little ones. So I am going to play this video for you. How did we get to the moon? We didn't get there by car or by plane or by boat. We got there using the Apollo 11 rocket but how did we land on the moon? That's what we'll be exploring today. Hi everyone, my name is Evan, and today we are going to be making our own lunar lander module. We're going to be doing this using materials right here in our own home. In 1969, NASA engineered the Apollo 11 rocket to become the first space flight to put a person on the moon. However, it was the lunar lander module 
that allowed the Apollo 11 crew to land safely onto the never before touched surface of the moon. Yay. Our goal today is to allow our astronauts to land safely on the ground. This means that they do not fall out. Feel free to pause this video at any point during your project. Now, there are no specific materials required for this project. You can use whatever you find, but your lunar lander module will need three components. It will need a cockpit for your astronauts. Today, I'm going to be cutting up this egg carton. It will need a parachute to slow the descent of the cockpit. I'm using coffee filters today. And then of course, what space mission is complete without astronauts. So go find your materials and we'll meet right back here. What did you find? Did you find some cool materials? Now that we've got our materials, it's time to get to work. Okay, so we have our lunar lander module. Now it's time to test it. Remember, my goal is to allow the astronauts to land safely on the ground. So here we go. Lunar lander module test number one. As you can see, I might need to make a few modifications to my lunar lander module. Good thing I'm not trying this on the actual moon. How did yours pan out? What improvements can you make to make yours work better? Share with us your projects in the comments below and what adjustments you made. In the meantime, I'm going to figure out if I can do something for Nut Armstrong and Buzz Acorn here so they don't fall out of their space mission. Until next time, have a great day, everybody. Well, there you go. There's Mr. Evan showing you some things you can do and what you can use to make a lunar lander. So I'm just going to repeat some of those things just in case um, you didn't hear it or you came in a little late. So a lot of things you can do, again, finding things around the home. So and here we found things we can use at the museum. And there's different things you can add to expand on this activity as well. So one of the things we do when we work um, and do lunar landers with older children is talk a little bit about um, other materials they can use, what can they use is like shock absorbers. So when the lander um, is landing on the moon and you're practicing that, what things can help cushion that fall? So things we like to use here are little marshmallows. Um, we also like to use sometimes straws so that they can figure out how to use those that might help cushion the fall. Just like Mr. Evan mentioned though too, we like to use um, coffee filters. Sometimes we use index cards or other paper, aluminum foil. Again, things that you could easily find around your home. You want to be able to connect things. So sometimes we use string, rubber bands, or of course our masking tape we like to use as well. As, uh, as Mr. Evan mentioned, we also have certain uh, qualifications that we need to have, so certain requirements uh, that we require. So we want to make sure that there is um, a body or, as he said, a cockpit, something that your astronaut, so for me, I'm using this big red puff ball, can fit in. You're going to want some kind of base and something to put your um, lunar lander on so that something is flat surface. So we've used paper, we've used different things. And then is there something that can help slow down the descent as he used a parachute? So on I've put together some different things. One of the things uh, that I'll show you in just a minute, but one of the things we always like our kids to do and our students to do in our programs is sketch out their design. So once they know the materials they have, 
we like to have them sketch a design, something that they have in their, in their ideas and, and inspirations that they might think about when they're thinking about putting together a lunar lander. So what are those pieces that they need um, to make sure their lunar lander can keep their astronauts safe, land them safely? So we have them usually sketch it and then also label some of the parts. And then when they have that all done, then it's the fun part where they can actually design it and test it. So a little earlier, I went ahead and put some things together and I'll show you my lunar lander, which you can see here. So mine looks a little different for Mr. Evans and that's okay. That's one of the fun things is again, you're using your imagination so you can create what your lunar lander would look like depending on the different materials that you have. So here I have my base. I have my um, cockpit for my astronaut and he's right inside there, right there. And I can add a secondary astronaut into my cockpit there. I put some straws on the ends here that you can see. I thought that might help it when it lands so it doesn't tip over because that's one of the things when we practice and test this, that's, we, we gotta see that make sure our astronauts are safe and aren't falling out. One of the restrictions we always tell the kids is that they can't enclose the astronauts. So we don't want you to go ahead and put a top over that, but that doesn't mean you don't have something that might help keep them from flying out. So some of that safety and protective gear there. And then I also did some kind of parachute to help, again, slow the descent down to the moon. So here's my design. I wonder if it worked. What do you think? Do you think this one would land without my astronauts falling out? And what do you think would happen if I dropped it just a couple feet versus if I held it up above my head and dropped it? What would happen? And what does your um, what does your moon look like? Where's your landing spot on the moon? One of the things that we have here at the Indiana State Museum is our Omni Globe. And you will actually, it's a big globe and you can actually pick on moon landing as in a setting. And it will show you on the globe the moon and the various areas where there have been landings on the moon. So it's a pretty cool thing to look at as well as again, coming to see our moon rock, testing out your lunar lander at home with simple materials you can find. So that is our lunar lander activity. It's a very popular one. Um, and again, you can make these over and over again because you can try different ways, test it, um, iterate new ways, maybe try a new material and really have lots of fun with it. So I hope you go home today. Again, there is a lesson plan available um, on the Celebrate Science Indiana website where you've logged in, where you can get your own lesson plan and play around and have some fun today um, during the Celebrate Science Indiana Day. Are there any questions or comments? Or is anyone, I'm curious, has anyone ever tried to build their own lunar lander before? And if so, how successful was it? Or did you have to make some changes to make sure your astronauts didn't fall out? Any questions? If not, thanks for joining me today on our Lunar Landers. Again, enjoy the rest of your sessions you have today that you can um, go to for the Celebrate Science Indiana. And please be sure to come over to the Indiana State Museum and take a look at some of our moon and space objects that we have here or come to one of our programs because we do a lot of space programs here. If there is no questions, thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Or stay tuned, I'm going to be doing another activity right after this.